Hello everyone, I'm Han Wang from Illinois Institute of Technology. Today, my presentation is a flexible platform for video analytics with differential privacy. In this work, we will protect the privacy in videos. Let us first look at the such risks in real video. Through the internet development, Massive amounts of video are generated from personal cameras, traffic monitoring facilities, and many other de video recording devices. These videos are collected and analyzed. However, sensitive information such as vehicle plates, human faces, human bodies, and the name tags in video may cause privacy concerns. Then, it's important to protect video privacy when we release them for analysis. Next, I will introduce some related research work, such as the Privacy Preserving System for Video Action Classification and the Preserve Privacy by Defocusing in Computer Fusion Area. However, this protection cannot provide formal privacy guarantee. Other work are about cryptographic protocols for video, such as using SIFT algorithm over encrypted image and privacy cam. Readings of interests are identified before being encrypted using AES. They only consider the image and the specific applications. Moreover, the computation cost is very expensive. Then, in our proposal, we design a flexible video analytics platform for any untrusted analyst. Each video owner sends the sanitized video with satisfying differential privacy to a trusted server. This server will not release videos directly. When analyst has a request, server returns back the corresponding result based on sanitized video. These queries may be what is the count of vehicles in video, or what is the average time of each vehicle or pedestrian staying in the video. To protect sensitive visual elements in the video, we give the visual element based differential privacy definition. Each video owner can predefine sensitive visual element by themselves. Then, video DP ensures that adding any visual element into any number of frames or removing any visual element from the video would not result in significant privacy risks in video analytics. It's worth noting that even the background in the video can be also defined as sensitive information and protected. Similar to traditional definition DP, there is an exception. If the query aims to specific visual element, some RGB of output may be not in the smaller data set. That probability will be zero. The optional DP can be relaxed to optional data DP. Next, I will introduce the three phase video DP work. After what we discussed, before three phase work, we have to pre process the video, pre define visual element, and detect all visual elements in video. We use existing computer vision algorithms like HOG for human detection and use tracking algorithm to organize same visual element in different frames. Then we assign the same visual element in different frames with the same ID. After that, we sample the pixels with the constraints to satisfy different show privacy and interpolate missing pixels at post-processing to boost utility. At the last, trusted server can apply any computer vision algorithm with generated videos of phase one and two to get result 
and send it back to other lists. In the phase one, it deals with pixels inside each protected visual element based on RGB. As we know, since the correlation between RGBs of a protected visual element, or RGBs follow sequential composition, then we have to assign privacy body to all distinct RGBs. Counts of distinct RGBs may be up to 256 power of three. It's impractical to allocate privacy body to every RGB. Then, pixels are categorized into following three cases with the RGB case one. So RGB in any visual element, but not the background. For this kind of RGB, they will be suppressed. Case two, the RGB in the background, but not any of the visual elements. This kind of RGB will be retained. Case three, the RGB is in the background and at least one visual element. RGB in this case may be allocated privacy budget and derive sample pixel counts. At last, randomly sample pixels from entire video to generate a raw output video with sparse pixels. For RGBs in case three, we define the optimal K distinct RGB to receive the privacy budget, which maximizes the utility while ensuring privacy bound. If the number of distinct RGBK is large, more distinct RGBs in the visual elements, but the budget for each RGB would be extremely small. If K is small, the budget allocated for each RGB would be large, but less distinct RGBs can be sampled. Both may affect the utility of output video then we use the mean square error of RGB values for each visual element as objective function to get the optimal K. Since every pixel in visual element epsilon J can be sampled with the original RGB or unsampled with an estimated RGB value, we minimize the expectation of MSE value after phase two and interpolation. Then this K RGB is received budget and satisfy absolute differential privacy. But how we choose this K RGBs and how much budget should be allocated to each RGB? Our RGB selection rule is to partition visual element into K multiple scales and choose top frequent RGB in each scale. The criteria for allocating budget is that privacy budget should be based on the count distribution of RGBs in different visual elements. Since the count distribution of each RGB is different and each visual element should fully utilize the privacy budget epsilon. In the budget allocation, we first consider the RGB retained in n visual elements, the MS1, MS2, MS3 visual element, until all selected RGBs are assigned privacy budget. In the running example, we can see different visual elements have different RGBs. Blue color in three visual elements is considered first. We get the count distribution in each visual element for color blue, and the privacy budget should be the minimum of them. Then we do the same work for green color that in two visual elements. At the last, we consider yellow, purple, and red color respectively they obtain rest privacy budget of each visual element. Before sampling, we have to compute the sampling count for each distinct RGB. 
Suppose of RGB theta r, there are three r pixels in the video wheel. The combination to sample x pixel is that xr combination from set cr. The probability is 1 over xr combination from set cr. So the probability for the smaller video v prime, we have 1 over xr combination from set cr minus crj. j means the visual element different in v and the v prime. To make sure all video elements in the video satisfy the visual privacy, we have the max XR. Next, after sampling phase, we have three kind of pixels and we need to do post processing for entire video. As we know, all pixels in case one are suppressed. Pixels in case two are retained Pixels in case three are partially sampled. We have to fill the missing pixels from case one and three. We use the bilinear pixel interpolation, which take average RGB of labeling pixels to reconstruct the video. We skip pixels without labeling pixels and always start from the pixel with, which has labeling pixels until all pixels are reconstructed. Next, we talk about the privacy in our three phases. In the sampling phase, pixels not in any video element that do not result in privacy loss. Also, no differential privacy for sampling pixels with RGBs from all the video elements. Then the pixel sampling satisfies absolute no differential privacy. Interpolation for phase two works as post-processing DP. It doesn't consume any privacy budget. At last, the queries are applied to the DP results of phase output of phase one and two. So the entire video DP phases satisfy absolute differential privacy. Here, I will show the experimental results. In our experiment, we test the performance on three real video datasets. There are multiple object tracking datasets with pedestrians and vehicles. UCSD anomaly detection dataset with crowded pedestrians. Boxy vehicle detection dataset with crowded vehicles. There are 15, 24, and five videos in each dataset, respectively. I also give some representative frame of one video in each dataset. We test the utility from following four evaluations. KL divergency measures the count distribution difference of the RGBs in the input and the private videos. Mean square errors measure the difference between all the RGB's value in the input and the private videos. And we tested the detection and the tracking accuracy in the private video, such as pressing, gene, and recall, which are detection and the tracking accuracy in each frame. In each frame. At last, we test the specific queries in many different applications. The applications uh, is with small sensitivity and large sensitivity. First group experiment tested the relationship between KL and parameter epsilon, MSE and the parameter epsilon. In the previous presentation, we have talked about the predefined protected visual element by each video owner. Here we have a result for treating background as a visual element or not. A figure is KL value for visual element without background. B figure is KL value for visual element including background. As we can see, the KL value is larger when we treat background as visual elements. Since pixels in the background scene are sampled rather than fully retained, but the result for Treating background and visual elements still acceptable. 
CD vigors uh, MSE value uh, before and after interpolation. We can see that phase two interpolation at post -process processing can boost the utility. For video analysis, it's important to have high detection and tracking accuracy. We have the recall and the precision for video element counts in entire video. We compare the video DP results with the results of directly making the video element area black. Recall increases as absolute increases since more pixels are sampled. Then less video elements are blurred in the private video. However, our precision is always high. Moreover, we can observe that our method had better results. We also calculate counts of frames that include video elements over certain counts. We have compared it to PinQ platform and blacking method. PinQ result is very fluctuated. It's obvious that video DP had the best performance. Video DP can also privately return query results based on detected and tracked video elements in different applications. Here, we give some case studies. We test our query, how many video elements in each frame? Sensitivity for this query is one, since the count difference in each frame is at the most one. We can see good performance from PinQ and with a DP platform. However, we also have results for application with larger sensitivity. A query returns how long each pedestrian or vehicle stays in the video, which can be measured by the number of frames involving each video element then the sensitivity may be very large, maybe the all frames in the video. In these two figures, it shows how long each pedestrian stays. Compared to PinQ platform, video DP result is less fluctuated and lies close to original result. When epsilon is larger, the result is better. We can draw similar observations for the stay time of vehicles for both moving downstream and up downstream directions in the traffic monitoring videos. Thus, video DP can both work well in small and large sensitivity compared to PinQ platform. At the last, we have the conclusions. To our best knowledge, we propose a first differentially private platform for video analysis. If the Eventually, functions video analysis with high utility for different queries in a flexible manner. The platform is, a, is extensible to relaxed privacy locations for videos. Experimentally validate the video DP performance using real videos and benchmark with the platform with the PinQ platform. Thanks. Thank you. That's my all presentation. I would like to. Take questions.